9060 Doors is brought to you in part by Blades Bait and Tackle, your year-round connection to fishing Beatty Knock. Well, believe it or not, trout season is right around the corner, and fly fishing is a great way to spend time on the stream. I visited a fly tying workshop to learn a bit about the art of tying flies. When you can tie and then go on the river and you catch fish on that, 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 lights, up the, that lights up the eyes, you bet. And I'm on the Garden Peninsula. We'll start out with some perch fishing and end up with smallmouth. Started out perch fishing. We decided to leave, come down to South River, and we had a blast. Nine million acres of forest, 1,700 miles of continuous shoreline, 4,300 lakes, 12,000 miles of streams, more than 300 waterfalls, 15 counties, two time zones, and one area code. Welcome to the Upper Peninsula. Welcome to 906 Outdoors. Nine Hundred Six Outdoors is brought to you by Cooking Wild Seasonings. Make it fresh, make it yours. There's a lot of reasons fishermen fish with a fly rod. It's an art, a craft, and a science all rolled into one. For some, it's about tying your own flies and then watching something you made coax a trout onto the end of your line. I promised myself that this summer I would learn to fly fish, and I have full intentions of keeping that promise. So when I heard about the free fly tying workshop at Northwoods Wilderness Outfitters in Iron Mountain, I immediately marked it on my calendar. The class featured tips and instruction from three top notch fly tires, including renowned UP fly fisherman, Arlen Sun. I got started about 30 years ago. My mom did all my tying, all our tying for us. And I was 11 years old when I started fly fishing and my mom started tying and she basically tied just the Adams, Coachman streamers, just a few different flies. But I wanted to get into more of a variety for myself, so I got the books and the equipment and I started uh, tying, right now I'm tying about 53, 54 different patterns. And uh, I, move, I move a lot of them right out, right out from my house. I sell a lot of them, but uh, I've been tying, you know, like I say, about 30, 35 years. Uh, it's a good hobby, especially in the wintertime. Evenings, that's what I do. Is, you know, there's an interest behind every fly. And with all the patterns I'm tying, I need a lot of material, but I'll set up my table and I'll stay on one pattern until I get about three, four dozen tied, then I keep switching. But when you're doing something like this, you get an interest in your mind and it, it's a goal all the time, you know. And what really works is when you get out on the river and you catch something with it. When I first tied that merger last year and I first tried it out and I hit four nice browns, it made me a believer, you know. And that's what I like to do. I like to prove my, my flies. What we'll do is we'll put together a, a Adams, which is the most popular fly in my fly box. <coughs> And it's a number 12 Adams. A little base on here. Put a little hitch on there to secure it. The wings are off of a barred rock chicken. And you get them on, get them evened up so they look natural. <coughs> the wings have got to be pretty much in proportion to the size of the shank. Put a little half hitch in there, secure it. Now we go back and put the tail on. The tail would be a mix of Rhode Island red and barred rock. A little half hitch in there to hold them. The tail has got to be in proportion about the same size. Same length as the wings. A little wax on the thread. This is muskrat dubbing, taken off of a muskrat hide. Make a nice body, nice and uniform. Okay, we got that, now we need 
the hackle to keep them afloat. Get Hard Rock and Rhode Island Red. Put them on together. Half it so she stays in position. That Adams will impress me about any mayfly, like your Hendrickson, light dark K Hill. It's a fly that is very much used in our areas. I throw a little half hitch in there and secure it. Now we put the brown through. It's a good representation of, uh, of our mayflies. Hold that thread back so we don't cut it. Now I make a little head on it. Whip finish it off. Head cement on her so she doesn't come apart. That fly will never untie. That's the hottest fly in my fly box. This is your basic pattern. It's a little bit variation from what what most people use. Um, I get it to look a little more natural and it's uh, very, very effective. And I change the colors according to what fish are running, what eggs are found in the river. Early in the year, I want to go pinks, maybe some off colors for uh, the dead eggs that you do see. And then uh, more towards fall when the browns and bigger fish like that, salmon, I'll go with more of like an orange or you know an off orange kind of color like that. I kind of keep that in a pretty big clump. You put about six to eight real good wraps in the middle. That'll secure it, keep it from rolling up. Then I just kind of flare it back. And I'll keep just a little bit behind the eye, and that'll also keep it from rolling. It'll keep it from tearing away if you get a steelhead or a brown or a fish with some pretty good teeth. It won't tear it up too bad. I don't need to have a crazy whip finish or anything like that. The glue will kind of hold it, so I just run a few quick half hitches. And then the only, the next part, just where we're just going to trim it up and kind of give it that natural clumpy look. And you can kind of just take each little piece, kind of pull it out, and then just kind of round it, trim it, and you don't want it to be a perfect circle. Like I said, you want it to look like that clump or row that's released from the female, and then uh, you want it to have that, that roundish look. When you do these, you want to wet it so you can actually see what it looks like in the water. And now uh, you can use this all the way through winter time into spring. Uh, this is a very effective pattern for steelhead. Salmon will take it. Uh, I've even caught cohos on it. I've caught a few walleyes on these, but that's basically it. It's a pretty, uh, pretty simple pattern, pretty effective, and it's a uh, and that's, uh, that's basically it. That's called your clown egg. All right, what we're going to do here is a little tube fly tying for pike and muskie. This seems to be kind of the new thing, especially over in Europe, they're tying a lot of tube flies. This is a gel splint uh, vivis string. It's really strong. It's actually a little bit better than a Kevlar. I got about a two and a half inch piece of tube on here. We're going to tie a, a replot stinger. Okay, I got these sandwiched in between here. And I'm going to go tie these off to one side. Use kind of a soft wrap at first, and then you can pull down on this stuff pretty tight, tightly. Get a few more wraps going here. Get that locked down. I'm aiming these feathers to the inside. You can flare them out if you want. And we'll do the same thing on the other side of the fly. They do make special uh, vices for tube fly tying. If you're going to tie these, especially, I would go with just a tube fly vise. They're a little bit uh, easier to tie off of. But I'm going to wind this down pretty tight, wrap up some of that stuff. Then, of course, uh, the best thing to do is get a little cement head and lock that down a little bit. After almost every tie, you want to do something like that. It helps uh, keep everything nice and tight. Then I'm going to use a uh, little bit of raccoon. Raccoon is a little longer than rabbit, a little lighter actually. Really acts good in the water. I'm gonna take about an inch and a half or a little bit longer piece, and I'm gonna cut that off. Then what you do is take a comb, and you kinda of comb out some of the under fur. It does get webby, and that stuff will make the fly really uh, heavy in the water. What I also like to do on the end here, taper this up a little bit. It makes it uh, a lot easier to tie in. A little drop of glue in there doesn't, doesn't hurt anything right now. And what I'm gonna do is just palmer this forward on here. And as you do this, you wanna make that hair rake to the back as much as you can. And you can wind this down pretty tight. Again, another drop of glue. Now I'm gonna put a little uh, 
crystal flash in there. About uh, half a dozen strands, about all you need. And you usually want to kind of make these ends a little uneven so that they're not square end. About halfway up, tie these in. What I'm going to do is flare these out a little bit now so that they cover half of the fly up basically. Bring these around. I'm going to flare them up on this side too. Kind of tying in the round here is what, what you want. A little bit of action all over the place. Today's show is brought to you in part by Rapid River Knife Works, home of Michigan's largest custom knife factory showroom. I'm going to go with another color, going off to the side here a little bit. This next piece you want to make a little bit longer, probably uh, two inches long. Put a little bit of different color in there. Once in a while, some of these clips come in handy. You can uh, kind of hold some of your materials to the rear. Go another yellow, repeating the other steps that I did. Just gives you a little more length overall fly. I, I personally like a little bit of a uh, squirrel tail on the front. Gives it that little bit of gill looking head stuff there. A couple wraps and then I'm going to just fan that out with my thumbnail. About half of it. I'm going to tie two, two groups in here. Tighten that down a little bit more. Put some eyes on there. Just that they stick a little bit. And you have some UV cure here. And you just hit it with the torch a little bit. That should hold that for now. Likewise on the bottom. Then I just do a little bit more to build up the head. Even it out here a little bit. Tends to lock everything down tight. And you don't have to worry about stuff coming apart. I'm going to release the, the mandrel. The center there. Trim some of this hair stuff up here. I'm going to just cut that tube back just a little bit. Stick the mandrel back in. Take a lighter. Make that tube... Uh, Kind of roll back up on itself a little bit there. That way it's nice and soft, smooth up front. Then in the back, comes with a little bit larger diameter soft tubing. Cut yourself about a little half inch or so. Shoot a little glue down in there. Then on the tail end, you want to put that right in there. You run your fluorocarbon through there and on up through the, through the tube. And that way, when the fish hits, the tube will usually pop off, slide up your line. You can use any any size hook you want that way. So there you have it. That's a tube fly. Welcome to Garden. Most fishing adventures begin and end at the dock. We were in Garden, where the dock means something a bit different. We began at the dock at the dock, and yes, ended at the dock at the dock. I hooked up with Brian Claremont, Nate, and Beatty Knot Guide Dustin Barbu for a day on the water. First on the agenda, Lake Michigan Perch. Well, right now I'm just hooking up the old gotcha perch rigs. It's kind of a, not really a secret, but it's what we like to use. They got a fly, a little pink bead on there. I like the orange beads with the red fly the best, but all I got is pink today. Using the minnows kind of keeps the small ones away. We've been using crawlers quite often, but kind of get sick of reeling in 40, 50 small ones to keep two big ones. So we go with the minnows, that brings us more keepers. What I like to do is give it a little drag across bottom, always keeping tension on my line as well. It kind of helps you feel the light bites. Sometimes the big ones, they, they'll grab that bait and swim towards your line. You can see your line loosen up and it really helps having a ultra light pole. There's a big baity knock perch. It's not your biggest, but that's a good keeper, good eater. We like these ones. It's just a little baby. We'll get some bigger ones. Started out a little deeper and we weren't getting no bites, so we moved in a little bit. You gotta be little before they get big. Right? Yup. Next year, this one will be hitting the grease, not the water. That's perfect for eating, but to eat. When we're perch fishing, I like to rig my poles up with the Power Pro. I use the high vis yellow. Usually if you got slack in your line, you can't feel that subtle bite. Sometimes them big ones, they're not biting super hard. And when they do, they swim towards you. So it's a lot harder to feel. And that's why I don't like using a bobber because your bobber will sit out there. And sometimes it'll swim around and you can't tell in the waves when you got one on. Most of the time you get a swallowed hook 
and you kill a lot of them baby perch. Or this way you can feel them in the bite right away and you get them right by the lips. They're spawning in here for sure, but they take a lot of cover from the comrades. They'll push them in, they'll come out. The comrades, you'll see them, they'll line up by the thousands out there. And Well, I think the perch kind of tuck up in here underneath these boats and these boats kind of keep the comrades away, which kind of keeps our population of perch going. And them comrades, they take a lot, a lot more perch than people think. They're eating limits and limits, everyone. You throw them in a roller, roll them all up nice. Lay them out. That's good eating, Dustin. They don't get no better. Thanks for taking us today. Not a I problem. Appreciate it. I appreciate you coming always, down. Always it's always a, a pleasure. Yeah, always a good time fishing together. Oh, look at this. Look at this. A walleye. Oh, no, it is a perch. Look at this one. <laughs> but you know what? This is a big female, and I don't like them this big. I like the other ones, so we're going to let this one go. But that's got to be all at 12 inches, eh? Maybe even 13. These are big girls, big females. I want to let these bigger females go so they make some more perch for us. There you go, girl. Right, that was fun. 906 Outdoors is brought to you in part by Crest, your Northwoods neighborhood store. 20, 21, 22, 22. We're getting there. Well, that does it for the perch fishing for now. We're going to head to South River, try and catch some bass, see how many we can get today. <laughs> fish and perch to come for this right here and this this is a nice bass he's bomb got a big fat belly yeah that's what lipstick. we're after on that one. it did four or five pounder back to some more fishing oh no nice bass See if I can do the old lift her up on this one. I don't know, that's a pretty big one. Ooh. Inch per inch, pound per pound, man. These smallies are awesome. Nice smallie. Nice. That bite's starting to turn on now. Nice smallie. Nice little pre-spawn. Pre Smalley, inch for inch, pound for pound, they fight really good. 80s lure lipstick. They're working good today. That purple and white's good color. The pike like them too. Go get bigger. Go make babies. Four or five weeks from now, I should start booking trips. Middle of June, beginning of July. We'll be fishing pike, bass, perch, walleye. If we get on some musky, we'll start getting some musky baits and start getting rigged up for them as well pretty much anything but salmon. Get on as much bites as we can. You know, the more to offer, just be versatile is what we're going for. And now I'm using a, the shadow wrap, size 11, that's perch color. Do some guiding out a little baity knock. I don't know how much inland lake fishing we'll do. We'll do a little bit of that. Mainly sticking to big baity knock, little baity knock areas. A little ice fishing, that's, in, that's always in the works. Yeah, he came up and I, I slowed her down because I seen him behind it. And as soon as I slowed her down, boy, is he a chunk. He's a chunk. Raised here pretty much my whole life. Commercial fishing background, so I know the waters pretty well. A lot of experience. It helps out big time when you're trying to play the waters and the winds. Beautiful color. We're excited to be in the new Ranger 621. Lots of nice equipment, lots of lures, lots of bait, full guide service, life jackets, poles. You just show up, bring some snacks, some drinks. We'll have a fun day fishing. This isn't like the other stuff you get, this really sticks. You see how nice it sticks to your lure? And this is the lure lipstick, I talked about it before. And there's a fear pheromone in there. Very impressed with these JT rods as well. JT Outdoor Products rods. Shadow wrap. Lure lipstick drew the big one in that time. Woo! Put in three 
fun for fun. Hey, we're having fun. We're catching fish. That's a call, right? Yeah. Yeah. Feel right. Triple, we gotta get a triple dry. Yeah. Here we go, triple, triple, three fish. Feel free to join us on Facebook or visit us at 906outdoors.com. Thanks for watching and we invite you to join us next week for another adventure right here on 906 Outdoors.